Uh, good day. I'm, I'm delighted to be part of this panel and apologize for not being there in person. My job is to give you some background for the Evans Commission and to outline some of the key priorities that we've been working on that we think will be relevant to GIN members. So the Evidence Commission, uh, the impetus for it came from our experiences in establishing and running the COVID N network. This was a network established early on in the uh, pandemic to try and promote cooperation and collaboration and reduce inappropriate duplicate, duplication of effort amongst um, uh, evidence uh, synthesis, evidence recommendation, and evidence intermediary um, partners uh, who were responding to the pandemic. And we included groups like Cochrane, uh, the African Centre of Evidence, and also for Jim. Um, during the pandemic, uh, we uh, observed a lot of failings of the global evidence support system uh, that could be improved, and also many um, innovations that we needed to build upon. And so uh, uh, just to give you a couple of examples of those, um, these are, this is the work we did in COVID End itself, and we developed methods for ultra rapid syntheses um, where evidence could be uh, summarized within a two or within hours or days uh, a window, depending on the rapidly emergent questions that decision makers um, were facing. Uh, and by month 17, we produced over 150 of these products. Um, we also uh, created the COVID end inventory of evidence syntheses. And this was an initiative to try and um, improve the signal to noise ratio and support decision makers to find uh, trustworthy evidence rapidly. Uh, so we identified over 13,000 syntheses that have been conducted globally. Uh, we appraised those using AMSTAR. We um, uh, uh, looked at that up-to-datedness and also whether they used a grade-like approach to um, um, uh, uh, indicating the certainty of the evidence um, that they summarized. And from those 13,000 syntheses, we found only 652 that we thought were of sufficient high quality and up-to-datedness um, that uh, uh, they would be valuable to decision makers. And we included those in an inventory as a one-stop shop for decision makers who want to find um, trustworthy, up-to-date, high-quality evidence synthesis to support their decision making um, during the pandemic. Um, so the Evidence Commission uh, uh, really aims to build upon these experiences and help us reimagine how evidence supports for systems could better support decision makers globally and also across all sectors. So the arguments for evidence support in health are equally re uh, relevant when we think about uh, uh, decisions that are being made in the social or economic sectors. Um, so that's really what the Global Commission has been trying to do. And I'd like to just give you a couple of examples of work that we're doing that we think is relevant um, to this audience. Firstly, the Commission recognized that we need to um, identify and support global public goods uh, that can promote evidence use around the world. Uh, and examples of global public goods would include um, the PROSPERO um, system for prospective registration of systematic reviews, but also organizations that are developing syntheses and uh, guidelines to support uh, evidence use globally, such as Cochrane and, uh, and, and GIN. Um, paradoxically, whilst I think these organizations have demonstrated their value during the pandemic, at this point in time, I'd say probably their funding and their sustainability is as fragile as it has ever been. And if we want to have robust evidence support systems in the future, we need to find global solutions to supporting them um, so we all can, so they're sustainable and we can all benefit from them. Another area that we uh, have particularly recognized is uh, the challenge of ensuring that there is an equally distributed capacity to support evidence use. Again, during the pandemic, there are a number of jurisdictions that had uh, uh, very robust systems, but particularly um, in lower resource settings, often uh, there wasn't the, uh, the, uh, the, the ca uh, capacity or resources to actually sort of support uh, decision makers locally um, uh, uh, as they were needed. And therefore, we need to think about how do we actually do, how do we bridge this? How do we make sure that wherever you are in the world, whatever country you're in, whatever jurisdiction, you have access to good evidence support? So I'm coming to the end of my time now, and I just wanted to um, note that the Evidence Commission is only going to succeed if um, different stakeholders around the world um, buy into it, um, uh, promote it, uh, work towards its recommendations being implemented. And so we hope that GIN and GIN members 
will be interested in this op uh, in this initiative and willing to engage with us in terms of uh, how can we make uh, better evidence support systems for the world. If you'd like to know more about what we're doing or you've got suggestions about how we might be able to improve what we're doing, uh, then please contact us and we'd be delighted to follow up with you. So thank you for your attention today and I hope you enjoy the rest of the panel.